Hey, what's going on, everybody? BDF44 coming up with you in another video. All right, so there was something I could talk about. I, I made a therapy session right now. I had nothing to talk about. I looked online and realized it was something I would love to have talked about in this therapy session. So I'm going to make an entirely different therapy session where I actually have something to talk about. Minnesota. Um, father and his daughters. His daughter, his wife come home. I, the context of the situation, I guess, is a boyfriend of the daughter comes over. Ex-boyfriend hasn't been with her in over a year. But I guess he's on a stock mission at this point. He brings himself over to dad's, to the house, you know what I mean? He call himself heartbroken, gonna barge his way in, do God knows what. So the footage of what you see is a doorbell uh, camera. And more or less, it shows the mother and daughter coming home. And you can see the dad opening the door to let them in. And they're trying to, you know, they're not scurrying in the house, but you can clearly see they... You know, they're trying to get in the house. They're a little perturbed. You know, it seemed to me they're just a little. You could see they're a little perturbed. It wasn't like they were in the greatest mood. They're coming home. Um, they come in the house. Five minutes later, the 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 the, the footage skips you. Five minutes forward, you could see the boyfriend, Caucasian male, looked pretty heavy too. Not a not a small guy. Um, I don't think he was older than 18, 19 years old though, man. Uh, but he's walking up to the door. I know the look in his eye. I've had that look in my eye. You're heartbroken. You feel like you're entitled to whatever time or attention or conversation that you're supposed to have uh, with with what with the person you think is you entitled to her time. Maybe you got your heart broken. Maybe she, didn't, whatever, whatever the case may be, you feel entitled, and no one's there to stop you f from doing this. And and look, this is one of those situations where it's like this. You're coming to my house. Let's say I'm putting my, myself in the father's shoes. My wife and child just got home. Just got home. Five minutes behind them come you. Now, I can't tell you what happened in between the five minutes when they got home to the time he gets to the door. But I think there's some type of interaction. Because what they say, you can hear them saying is, oh, my God, he's coming back as he's approaching the door. So that tells me that they had an interaction with him before they got in the house or in between the minutes that, that we seen him clip, the, the, the minutes where they clipped the video away, some type of interaction took place, whether it be on the phone or if he walked in the door the first time and then left and came back. I don't know. But this time it, seemed, it appears that he's coming to the door, uh, back and coming back to the door, and uh, he's going to try to barge himself in. So he's banging on the door. First he knocks no problem then he starts trying to barge his way in you can hear the father and the mother on the other end saying no don't do this the father saying <clears throat> calmly get off my porch get off my porch i've got a gun and as he continues to to you know try to barge his way through the door as soon as he either gets the latch open or it appears he's getting some gift in order to push through the door you see gunshots bow 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 three shots the boy He's getting hit, but he's not running. He's not scurrying away. It's almost like as the shots ring off, he just kind of turns around slowly and walks off, but the shots keep hitting him. He hits the boy in the back. The boy scurries off, falls, and doesn't get back up. A neighbor comes over, sees the situation, and, and it ensues from there. Cops show up, whatever happens after that. But the situation is this, man. The, the bottom line is, would you have loved to seen this go a different way? When the dad said I had a gun, he said it loud enough for everybody to hear it. But when the kid is going crazy and he's banging up against the door, I'm pretty certain either he didn't hear it or he he was seeing red and it and he just didn't it didn't register that that man said that he had a gun. <laughs> but if you're gonna try to barge your way into somebody's house, and they're responsible for their two you know two two women in their house, the two daughter, the daughter and the wife. They're not going to let you get past that door, man. They don't know if you have a gun. They don't know what your intentions are. The thing that bothered me about the situation was the mother initially asked the daughter, is the mother or the father, you can hear them ask, do you want to talk to him? That tells me that if she would have said yes, they would have either let him in the house or let her out the house. So that right there tells me 
that dad was overreacting. That he was actually overreacting. Because if it was a, a situation where y'all was actually going to let her talk to him, then it shouldn't have been a situation where you thought he was so much of a threat that you had to blow him away before he walked through the door. That's how I look at the situation. But even in that scenario, what if dad thinks all of that I'm thinking, lets him through the door, he pulls out a gun, shoot everybody. He's already going crazy letting you, you know that that lock is not keeping him from getting in the door. So if the lock ain't keeping him from getting in the door, then what is he going to do when he gets behind that door after busting through that lock? Now, as a man, I feel like I can stop him. If it's just me and him, I'm, I'm going I'm to give my all. I'm going to stop him. But guess what? Maybe I can't. Very simply, maybe I can't. And he gets to my daughter. He gets to my wife. I'm supposed to let that happen. I'm supposed to even let the scenario for which that po can be possible. And I got a gun? Nah, it's not happening. <laughs> it's not happening. I got to protect my kids. Now, if it's just me in the house, you know what I mean? That might be different. But you're coming from my daughter. Your intentions are to be angry, bust through my lock, and come to my child. Yeah, I'm shooting you, and then I'm going to apologize about it later if I'm wrong. That's how that's going to go. You can lock me away and all that good stuff. That's how it's going to be. Because I'm not letting you near my daughter. I'm not going to let you near my wife. Like, to do what exactly? You know what I mean? You don't want to talk if you're trying to bust through the door. What you going to do, give her a hug? You ain't going to get that close. You ain't going to get that close. And so I'm... I'm with the dad. Do I think he overreacted? I do. Under the circumstances of if this was somebody y'all felt decent enough to let in the house just a five seconds ago, then probably shouldn't be shooting him when he come, if he tries to bust through the door. That's, that's how I look at the situation to a degree. I mean, it, you know, you guys could have very easily just called the police. You know what I mean? That's kind of what it's for. But you got to understand, when you talk about a place like Minnesota, these people have their guns. They don't need no police. They got, they got the guns. What are they need the cops for? And they got to stand their ground and all those type of different uh, protection rules to where, hey, if you come to my house, I got a gun. You don't have to be armed for me to shoot you. And so that's what it was. He got off scot-free, Dad, didn't, you know, protecting his family in the letter of the law. <laughs> Even though the kid was unarmed. And it's just like we said in regards to a previous situation uh, where there was a fight and, 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 people, and someone was shot during a football game. You can't be certain that just because it's fisticuffs that somebody won't get hurt won't get killed like you can't be certain there's been situations where people get hit in the head with a fist pick somebody up drop on their neck it's a lot of different things that can happen in a fist fight that you just you know especially if you're a smaller person you don't want a fist fight you know you don't want to find out if you're gonna win that fight or lose that fight you it ain't a fair fight if you try to square up with somebody three times bigger than you you know what i mean and you got a gun you're gonna shoot it you're gonna shoot it and that's and you're gonna apologize about it later so this is one of them situations in my opinion where it ain't no fair fight if you coming after after who it is I'm supposed to be protecting. I'm not I'm not gonna fight fair. I'm gonna play dirty. I'm gonna protect them and I'm gonna apologize about it later. Like that's how it has to be. And so I'm not mad at the dad. I wish there was a way that kid could not have been shot. Maybe one shot would have been enough. I mean it's very obvious you caught him. You bopped him twice. You you shoot him the third time in the back. I think that was I think that was vicious. To be honest with you, I think once you realize you've hit him, he's hit. It's, a, it's an 18 year old kid coming to see about his ex-girlfriend he's tripping you know yes he's tripping you know what i mean it's one of those situations where if you if you've been an 18 year old kid who's had his heart broken you probably felt like he felt now maybe you weren't stupid enough to try to barge in somebody's house <laughs> right unarmed particularly maybe you, you had somebody in place to stop you from even getting that angry Maybe you had a parent or a, a, a big bro or a sister to, like, stop you from going over there. And he did not, uh, which is really unfortunate. But at the end of the day, you just don't want to see. If you're the dad, if you're proud of how this played out, there's something wrong. That's what I'm saying. To you. There's a lot of people celebrating what happened there. I'm not celebrating what happened. There. I'm just telling you I'd have been sorry after I did it. You understand what I'm saying? There's, there would have been a whole lot of sadness, a whole lot of repentance, a whole lot of expecting to burn. You understand what I'm saying? After, like, I don't expect to go to heaven after doing something like that. But I'm going to make sure I protect my family anyway. That'll just be a conversation I have with the Lord after I get there. But, like, you know, <laughs> it, it ain't going to be a situation under any circumstance where I'm letting the people I get protected get hurt if I'm holding a gun. It's not happening. 
So I get where he was coming from. I just understand also that that was a, a kid that it could have been you. You know, that's what I would say to that father. Just understand when you pull that trigger three times, that child was you 18, 19, 20 years ago. You was that kid, got his heart broke, probably felt like he was entitled to doing some dumb shit, learned your lesson. You didn't give him a chance to learn his lesson. You shot three times. He died there. So if I'm his father or I'm his brother or something like that, just because I respect what it is you had to do doesn't mean that when I see you, it ain't going to be a problem. Because you shot him three times. And that was definitely unnecessary. 100% unnecessary. So that's my opinion about the situation. And just, just as fast as I can say that, I can also say, I don't know that I would have stopped you. Like I said, I'd have been sorry. I'd have been real sorry. Remorseful as heck. And I think that man should be as well. But he had to do what he had to do. Don't get that part twisted in, in the midst of my opinion. He had to do what he had to do. I just understand that that was an unarmed kid. And I understand that he had to pull the trigger three times. I do understand that. So, that's what I have to say about the situation, man. Rest in peace to that young man. Condolences to all people involved. Um, I'm sorry that the trauma took place as well there. There was, there was trauma taking place there. And that's something that we have to also... Uh, give credence to um, when you're protecting your family and, and, and you and you pull out a gun and you shoot somebody you do understand that you you now have put your family through something now they just witness something that, that daughter unfortunately she had to witness her ex-boyfriend be murdered when it was within her control to say yes I will speak to him if she would have said yes I'll speak to him he'd still be alive today now, that's not a burden she should harbor by any stretch of the imagination. But it is the circumstance that took place. It's what happened. And it's unfortunate that that's what occurred. She'll have to have she'll have to really, really live with that. And and that's not her burden to hold at all. Unfortunately, it's her father's for for protecting his family. It is what it is. So that's what it, that's what happens, man. We just when you're a gun owner and, and you're trigger happy about it, and you you just think about ah, oh, I got to shoot every you know whoever comes. I'm just gonna. Shoot. You do understand that it's not as simple as you've congratulations you've protected your family like America is telling you it is. It's a lot more to it than that, and there's a certain level of responsibility that needs to be handed to all of us to keep that balance in mind when assessing these situations. My name is BDL44. I thank you all for watching.